Hi, my name is Tony and this is Every Frame of Painting. So today I'm going to talk about a director whose work I love, but before that, let me be upfront. I think comedy movies today, especially American ones, have totally lost their way. I don't hate the jokes or the actors or the dialogue or the stories, though there's plenty of issues there. My real qualm is that the filmmaking, the use of picture and sound to deliver jokes, is just... What? This is boring. Delete. Look, everyone's taste is different. What you find funny is what you find funny. So I'm not saying these movies suck or you suck if you like them. What I am saying is that these movies aren't movies. They're lightly edited improv. Everyone stands still and talks at each other in close-up. Almost none of these jokes come visually. They're overwhelmingly sound. And not even the full range of sound, it's just dialogue. And this is really sad because that's just a fraction of what's possible in cinema. Apart from animation and some commercials, visual comedy is actually moving backwards. And that's why, if you love this kind of stuff, I cannot recommend Edgar Wright enough. Doctor, deal with it. He is one of the only people working in the genre using the full range of what is possible. And because of that, he can find humor in places that other people don't look. Here's an example. Let's say you need to move your character from one city to another to get your story going. How do you shoot it, and can you get a joke out of it? Well, no. Not if you send out a second unit to do it, every shot pans from left to right, you include really obvious landmarks and signs, you mix in generic helicopter footage, and you put upbeat music under it so the audience doesn't get bored. This is just lazy filmmaking and boring. We've seen it a million times. What would happen if you were truly inventive with this type of scene? Not ready. There we go. And this isn't just a series of quick cuts. There's a lot of good visual storytelling here. These two taxi shots tell you exactly where we came from and where we're going. These two shots emphasize the move away from civilization. Our main character always faces forward or to the right, so screen direction is respected. Turning the music down and the sound effects up is funny because each cut is jarring. And there's even some nice performances from Simon Pegg and Ryan Gosling. Okay, that was one example without context. You're right, totally unfair. Well. What if you had a movie where a horrible apocalyptic event happens and you want to foreshadow it earlier, maybe by having the characters not notice something important on TV? How would you show it? Would you just throw it in the edit for two seconds and two frames and none of the shots shows the relationship between the characters and the TV? Um, he's having a housewarming party. He just finished building his house. Or would you do this? Although no one official is prepared to comment, religious groups are calling it Judgment Day. There's panic on the streets of London. As an increasing number of reports of serious attacks on people who are literally being eaten alive. Okay, still unfair. Well, what if you had a movie where one character has stopped drinking, but the other characters are disappointed in him and you want to get a joke out of it? How would you do it? Would they just stand around and talk about his drinking? I appreciate it, but I told my wife I wouldn't drink tonight. Besides, I got a big day tomorrow. But, but you guys have a great time. A big day? I'm doing what? Or would you do this? What? I don't believe this. This is what separates a mediocre director from a great one. The ability to take the most simple, mundane scenes and find new ways to do them. Great directors understand that you can get a laugh just through staging. Here's an example I cribbed from David Boardwell. Things popping up in a frame are funny. Slow ahead. I can go slow ahead. Come on down and chump some of this. And it's not just things entering frame. Consider the opposite. I said, tell Miss Laura goodbye. Bye, Miss Laura. You can get a laugh from a zoom. You want to pop the trunk and roll the windows down, please? You can get a laugh from a crane up. I'm so sorry. I'm going home, Rita. I know, Shirley, I know. No, uh, seriously, I'm going home. Can you help me out? Oh. You can get a laugh from a pan. As Martin Scorsese put it, cinema is a matter of what's in the frame and what's not in the frame. So think about the frame. And this isn't just a matter of smart or stupid comedy. Really, if it works, it works. Ha -ha! 
So with that, here are eight things Edgar Wright does with picture and sound that I want to see other comedy filmmakers try out. Number one, things entering the frame in funny ways. It's listening. It's for Scott. The geographical location shouldn't factor in the application of the law. No thanks. Number two, people leaving the frame in funny ways. Ah! You don't know how to switch off. Yeah, if you didn't see anything suspicious, then who did? Number three, there and back again. They still out there. Yeah. Number four, matching scene transitions. Oh yeah, I remember this one. Wallace, how do you do that? Wallace! Number five, the perfectly timed sound effect. That time you dumped Kim. Okay, or... me and Kim are all good now, all right? Do feel free to spool through. Number six, action synchronized to the music. Drinking ah. beer pubs, <laughs> shall we? Number seven, super dramatic lighting cues. I'm gonna be a man. what it is about that girl. Scott, I forbid you from hitting on Ramona, even if you haven't had a real girlfriend in over a year. Hey. And number eight. I've never taken a shortcut before. And you know what, let's throw in number nine. Let him have it. So if you're a filmmaker, work on this. The frame is a playground, so play. And the next time you go to a theater and you pay 15 bucks to see a comedy, don't be satisfied with that is less inventive than Vine. And he said, uh, that's strange because...